Okay, hello and welcome everyone. Uh, welcome to JOD Traders Tea Time with me, Dadison Charles, because today is the 13th of April uh, 2020. So, yep, welcome everyone. Welcome to this um, Monday's uh, afternoon session, afternoon's recorded session, uh, where we're going to have a quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, the usual stuff. Um, but before we do that, as always, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimer. So, the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, a few seconds for you to read the rest, and we can continue. Okay, so um, also just before we jump in uh, into the charts, let's quickly have a, a quick rem reminder of our GOD YouTube channel to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos and of course our GOD Bank website and specifically our GOD research page which we also update on a daily basis. So yep, feel free guys to visit us here on JFD, uh, bank.com and click on the research tab right there on the top. Now, so um, as always, let's quickly have a quick update on what's happening here globally in terms of the coronavirus. Now, that was the previous figure that you saw. It was from this morning. Uh, let me just double check. So yes, it has risen a little bit. So that's that's good. Uh, but the fact is that it has risen just by a, f a slight bit. Let's put it this way. So not a huge uh, surge. So in a way, kind of for now, Everything kind of seems to be quite stable. However, of course, the uh, the number of deaths continues continues to rise, uh, which well is not a really good thing. So, um, but basically, yep, we'll continue monitoring the situation here, and uh, well, we'll see how this impacts the market. For now, um, of course, the European session is is closed uh, because well, we have a uh, it's a, it's a day off. Let's put it this way. Um, but the U.S. markets will be opening soon, and uh, uh, yep, uh, looking at this picture right now, and this is what I talked about last week, basically when I was covering the S&P 500 here. So uh, last week, uh, the uh, the index managed to retrace 50% of what it has lost since peaking here uh, in in mid February, and then dropping all the way here to the uh, to the low here to around mid. -February. Feb, mid mid March, uh, which is roughly around was around 2,192 levels. So after it kind of reached that level, uh, it rebounded and, and started pushing higher again. Now, um, again, looking at this picture right now, we can see that uh, the cash index, for example, right now is trading at around 2,780 territory. So basically, not far from where it ended the week uh, last week, and. Um, for now, looking at this picture, as, as I've mentioned uh, last time, uh, in a way, if this barrier continues to hold, this 50% uh, retracement on the Fibonacci uh, continues to hold, which is roughly around the 2,793 mark, um, then we may see a bit of a correction here, a move lower, um, and in a way, Everything could still be looking quite positive if we are, if we see the price remaining above this upside line, taken from the low of the 23rd of March. So again, we'll keep an eye on this one. It's a bit of a tentative line. I do understand that, but however, we'll keep that on the chart for now. So, uh, in a way, uh, continue monitoring this picture here. Um, it, as I said, keep an eye on the level here, this uh, 2,793 uh, uh, mark, which is the 50% retracement on the Fibonacci. If we get a nice push above this, then yep, we could see this one pushing further north. In, 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 other, in other words, as long as the price remains above this short-term upside line, we will continue targeting the upside. Now, in case this upside line breaks and we see uh, the price falling below the 2,637 zone right here, uh, which is not far from the 38.2% retracement here, uh, then, yep, uh, we could consider a bit of a downside move, a bit of a deeper extension to the downside. However, let's not forget, 
we do have this upside support line and let me just show you what this line is and for this I need to jump into a monthly chart and this is that this long-term upside support line also a bit tentative but uh, nevertheless we'll keep that on the on the chart and that one's taken from the lowest point of October 2011 uh, or in other words the lowest point of 2011 so that's what we're going to be keeping a close eye on. Uh, we'll keep an eye on this upside line, and in a way, if it if it fails to provide support, then yep, we could see a deeper uh, move uh, lower here. So keep your eyes on this one. Um, but again, like I said, for now, and uh, there is still a bit more chances for this one to drift higher. So let's see how this is going to play out. A quick update on gold. I'm not going to spend too much time on it. Uh, so gold managed to push higher today and uh, uh, again failed to reach that psychological 1700 level and kind of re started retracing again. Don't get me wrong, the, the day is not finished, uh, so we may see maybe a bit another push higher. Uh, however, it's a relatively quiet day today, so uh, for obvious reasons, of course, and uh, uh, that's why we're going to be probably careful here. Uh, we're not going to uh, kind of let's say try to uh, go for higher highs here um, in a way in in a way it could end up the day today for example below this 1700 uh, zone or, or even the, or of course the 1703 territory um, but maybe tomorrow could something something could happen here and we could see maybe this one pushing a little bit further north uh, in terms of the downside as I mentioned this morning uh, a drop below the 1645 level would be required Required in order to aim for slightly lower levels up until this upside support line taken from the low of the 21st of May. Uh, DXY, another index, but this time is a dollar index. And uh, today uh, the index it tried to move uh, below this territory right here, the 99.32. Uh, is that just let me double check 99.32 mark um, last time when I talked about DXY was that I was, what I was saying that if we see a drop below the 99.91 zone then yes it increases the chances of a further drift lower for now you can see that uh, yes the the direction is still uh, according to the plan we are moving lower however today we saw a drift lower below this 99.32 but as you can see the bulls very quickly pushed the index back up so basically there is a chance for this one to correct a little bit higher however if it remains below this uh, below this level here below this barrier the 99.91 zone then well we could see another round of selling so something to consider something to keep an eye on um, in terms of the upside uh, what you could do here as well is monitor this Yep, let me just put this one on the chart monitor this downside line um, and uh, in a way it comes in kind of perfectly in line here with this idea of a potential maybe a little small correction um, and then another slide lower so um, that's why we would in order to aim for a sl uh, let's say some upside here we would need to see a push above this downside line and then we could consider uh, like I said higher levels however to get a little bit more comfortable uh, with the with the upside in let's say at least in the near term then a push above the high of uh, of let's say the, the the current highest point of April which is around the 100 100.93 mark that's what we would be looking for in order to kind of uh, aim for like I said higher levels in the near term um, so if we get a break of this downside line yes we will aim for higher levels but only up until here up until this 100.93 level uh, because this could be a tricky one here and it could uh, get a hold up and then reverse back down so that's why let's keep it short and simple uh, but for now for now we are leaning more towards the downside as long as it remains below this downside line then yes we will continue aiming lower uh, Bitcoin so um, I've looked at this one last week as well and uh, basically what I was saying that we in order for us to uh, aim for lower levels first we would need to see a break of this upside line which we got fantastic and then we would like to see a drop below the 6,631 zone roughly around here guys uh, you could in a way round it up just to 6,630 or if you want 600 level so um, but nevertheless we need to see a nice good uh, clear close a daily close below this territory and then we could aim for further declines for now you can see that the 
the crypto did have an attempt today to drift below it so it did do that um, however the bulls and the bulls have pushed it back above it so yep that's why we will remain cautious for now so keep your eyes on this one again uh, still we are leaning more towards the downside uh, but just for that extra confirmation a drop below the 6630 zone could do the trick here for more sellers in terms of the upside um, well previously I had this well I still have this uh, upside line drawn here but to be honest we can get rid of it now because in a way it got violated so what we're going to focus here on will be uh, this uh, the high of last week which is around the 7466 mark so if we do get a nice push above this then yep we will aim for uh, for higher levels this uh, this area right here guys uh, could open the path towards uh, higher areas higher higher levels uh, because this would confirm a forthcoming higher high and yep more buyers could be joining in here so keep your eyes on these two levels uh, AUD and ZD quick update on what's happening here uh, I talked about about this this pair this morning um, basically what I was saying that we need to see a nice good push above the 200 day EMA here um, in order to kind of aim for higher levels and uh, what I was saying that in a way we are more positive than negative and as you can see this is yep this is pushing in the, uh, in that direction in the upwards direction however uh, if it continues to move higher we'll be very careful near this uh, 1.0532 mark so uh, we'll keep an eye on this one that's the highest point of March in a way in a way the pair might get a hold up here here and we could see maybe a bit of a retracement uh, back down um, in a way to consider some deeper extensions to the downside we would need to see a drop below the 1.0352 uh, zone roughly around there and then we could aim for lower levels yep uh, if if in case this pair decides to travel higher and breaks this level but breaks the 1.0532 mark then well I mean there could be a bit of a chance for this one to uh, to push higher however uh, don't get me wrong if this break happens let's say soon um, then well I mean we could be seeing actually maybe a false breakout here because we are quite overstretched here on the shorter time frame uh, to the upside so maybe a bit of correction could do here so and why not to kind of cor correct a little bit lower after we reach this barrier here so again that's uh, that's an idea uh, let's see if this 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 is going to work out um, however for today what you could do given that it's a little bit of a quiet day uh, keep your eyes on this 200 EMA on, on the daily chart and uh, of course keep your eyes on this daily candle because if we see a nice close above this uh, yep, uh, there is a possibility uh, for this one to drift higher. However, if we see a, a close below below this territory, uh, then uh, well, I mean maybe there's mm, there's a bit of a let's say it, it's it the bulls are finding it too difficult to overcome this 200 EMA right now at this point. So uh, again, we'll we'll continue monitoring this this one for now. The bulls are winning, um, so let's see if they can continue pushing this one further north. Uh, GPP USD also a quick update, and this is what exactly I was what I was, what I was talking about. So. Um, Basically, what I was saying is this morning as well, guys, to keep an eye on this barrier, the 1.2485, because in uh, in order to see if we're going to get a false breakout or not. So for now, it seems that we are having a false breakout. However, don't get me wrong, we still have the full U.S. session to go through. Um, and uh, yep, that's going to be quite interesting to see and quite interesting to watch if um, if the if the pair can remain if the daily candle can stay above this barrier above this 1.2485 zone if it can then yes we will push further north towards the 1.2726 mark which is the low of the 28th of february um, and uh, which also coincides with the 200 ema here on the daily chart so um, again, guys, keep your eyes on this one. Uh, could be quite interesting, but if it stays below this territory, well, as I've mentioned this morning, we could be seeing maybe a bit of a correction here to the downside. So, uh, and maybe we could end up having a, a bit of a range here. So, yeah, for now, like I said, keep your eyes on this one. Um, GBP Euro should have been like this, and uh, it should have been also like uh, this. So, GBP Euro, a uh, quick update on this. Um, I haven't looked at this one since last week, but what I was talking about last week was that, and let me just jump into a four hour chart. Um, basically, we needed to see a break above this barrier here, above this 1.1440, and ideally, we wanted to see an, at least a close, at least a four hour candle close above this barrier, but as you can see, uh, we did get a break 
but we didn't get a close today we are again testing this area but it's struggling to remain above it uh, also I, I had this upside line previously but as you can see it got violated and in a way it's no longer valid so now the main focus is on this little range here roughly between the 1.1305 and the 1.1440 zones so we'll keep an eye on this one if uh, we'll, we're Probably going to stay a little bit, let's say, or should I say, cautiously bullish. However, yes, we need to see a break uh, through one of these sides here before we could consider a further directional move. For now, we're just observing this one. Um, yes, it is above the 200 EMA here on the four hour chart. So, and to be honest, it's above all of its EMAs. So, in a way, there's kind of more chances for this one to drift higher. However, we need that confirmation break. Um, NZD CAD. So, uh, looking at this four hour chart here, uh, you can see that after the pair had a nice uh, reversal here, um, and let me just quickly uh, get this line here. So after it had a nice reversal from the uh, 0.80 zone, um, didn't quite really reach that psychological 0.80 mark, and uh, it, re it reached the 0.8016 zone from which it reversed and pushed higher. Um, found some resistance not far from here, from uh, the 0 0.8556 zone, and uh, well, now I mean, well, I mean, on the one hand, yes, it could drift further north, uh, it could drift a little bit higher. However, let's not forget that overall we are still below this downside line taken from the high of the 26th of March. Is that correct? Let me just 20, 25th of March 2019. So we're still below this downside line, and uh, in a way, um, yes, we could get uh, get a push, another push higher, but uh, yes, the upside might get limited near this, either near this barrier, the 0 0.8556 mark, which coincides with the 200 EMA here on the daily chart, or near this downside line, which I just mentioned. Um, so yeah, for now, we are maybe a little bit more positive than negative. However, uh, this positivity might uh, disappear if when we reach this downside line. We do have this upside, steep upside support line which currently is kind of playing uh, playing out here nicely but if the upside line gets broken then well I mean this is where we, we could consider a bit of a, a decline here to the downside at least back towards the uh, 0 0.8264 mark which is the low of uh, the, the current lowest point of April so keep your eyes on this one uh, USDCHF, also quick update, um, last week I talked about this one and basically what I was saying that we need to see a nice good drift below the 0 0.95, uh, 0 0.9653 mark here, uh, but as you can see we did get a drop lower on Friday and we did get a bit of a close here uh, below the zone, but this morning, uh, yes, this morning it did continue moving lower, however the bulls quickly pushed it back above this territory and now we're above it again, so in a way it's it's, to be honest, it's a little bit of a messy chart and um, it's not really everything is that clean here. First of all, let's get rid of this downside line because it's no longer valid. Um, uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to recycle this line and we're going to use it um, right here. Uh, we're going to take this, this one now and mark these two highs, the high of the 23rd of March and the high of the um, roughly around the 6th of April. So um, in a way, um, given that we've made, we're still sitting below this upside line here, taken from the low of the 9th of March, and don't get me wrong, both of these lines are tentative, so uh, we shouldn't kind of be focusing on them too much. However, uh, for now, it's really actually playing out nicely. So um, in a way, yes, we are seeing a push back above the 0 0.9653. Um, it could drift a little bit higher, but if it struggles to overcome this downside line, then yes, we could see another round of selling. Something like this basically could happen. For those who are more on the cautious side, you could just wait for another slide below the 0 0.9653 territory, and then we could aim for lower levels. With the upside, pretty straightforward. We are staying, uh, let's say, we're staying conservative and uh, waiting for a push above the um, the high of last week, which is roughly around the 0 0.9797, and only then we will uh, consider some higher levels. And finally, Euro USD. So uh, this one is declining today. Um, 
So this is what I talked about this morning and basically this barrier here initially the pair did push higher however as you can see it's failing to do so it drifted lower tested this tested this downside line from uh, from above um, and uh, rebounded from it and now it's kind of stuck again so basically long story short it is ranging here right now and if probably if we jump into a one hour chart even we can see that this the this kind of swing here um, and the, on the one hour chart you can see that these two lines here the 100 EMA and the 200 EMA on the one hour chart kind of acted as a fantastic acted as fantastic areas of support um, however let's jump back into a four hour chart and uh, again the same rule applies the same idea D applies we need to see a break of this barrier here before uh, considering higher areas again so yep guys for now uh, be very careful be very cautious here um, we are like I said waiting for a break above this in order to aim for higher levels if we don't get that break then yes the pair could drift a little bit lower here and maybe even it could actually drag on here uh, for a few days and uh, end up just gradually testing uh, let's say sliding down this uh, this this downside line uh, sliding it down uh, sliding down of it uh, from it and uh, testing this upside line and then this is where the big action could become I mean could happen um, and uh, we could see the big battle between the bulls and the bears I mean if if the bulls win they could rebound from here and push this one higher uh, but if the bears uh, take the control here then well I mean of course there it increases the chances of a drift lower if we get a break of this upside line however as I mentioned this morning we need to see a, a drop below the 1.0777 in order to get a little bit more comfortable with the with further declines so yeah guys for now uh, again it's a very tricky spot here uh, probably not worth of uh, let's say our time uh, but if we do get a break above this barrier here uh, then yep we will aim for some higher levels at least for a little bit more so guys I really hope you found it useful Thank you very much for watching and listening, and I really appreciate all your comments, guys, and thank you very much. Uh, thank you for your likes and comments and, and basically for your general support. Uh, it means a lot to me, so uh, thank you very much for that, guys. Um, so tomorrow uh, the market uh, comes back to normal. Everybody is open. Everything's open, so yep. Uh, basically let's let's see what the market brings us tomorrow but um, join or should I capture my video um, around six o'clock GMT time um, or a little bit after that I would say and uh, yep we'll have a, uh, we'll have a look at some of these instruments some new ones and we'll see what to expect from the market so yep thank you very much guys and I'll see you later bye bye